Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video two, and today we're talking about the top bar. So a nice introduction into the synth here. So on the very left-hand side, we're gonna see the save button. So if you make a cool preset, a cool patch, or something like that, and you wanna save it, click the save button. And this is gonna be where you enter your preset name, your author, so presumably you, the description of the patch, what is it, what does it sound like, and the usage down over here. And once you do fill out these boxes, it might seem kind of redundant, or like, oh, I don't wanna type this stuff in. It does help later on when you're looking through a lot of presets and you're going to build up your bank so it's kind of helpful to write stuff like that in here so moving on from there we also can also right click to save and how this is asking us how do we want to save our patch what kind of format by default it's going to be the h2p or the h2p extended and really the difference is for these two is here you can have extended comments or like line comments and the really cool part with this h2p as opposed to native is h2p is cross-platform so that's something really nice to keep in mind so if you always go to save here, go over here to this uh, gear right over here. And if we go down to these wrenches here, it's going to save presets to the user folder. You can select this here and go to selected folder. And you want to have your folder selected before you select save in selected folder. So I thought I would mention that before we move on here. Right over here, MIDI activity, once we hit some MIDI notes, we can see that lights up here. So we know that Diva is receiving MIDI activity. Pretty self-explanatory. Next up, we have the data bar. So not only do, does this show the preset name or something like that, it also shows the parameters over here that we're moving around with. So it's very useful to always look up here if you're doing some fine tuning or you wanna see what value is getting changed by how much. That's always the spot you kinda of wanna look at over here. And the little arrows on the left and right are going to toggle between the presets. So left and right are gonna change the presets. And what's actually kind of cool too as well is if you have a bank of presets in a separate folder like in your Explorer or something like that, you can literally drag and drop the preset onto this window and it's going to load that preset. It's not going to save it, but it will load it into the synth, which I thought it's kind of a cool little touch there. A little drag and drop preset loader right there. On the right hand side over here, we have these arrows, so the undo and the redo. Keep in mind, there are only 10 different steps, but the cool part is that if you change a preset in the middle of undoing something or something like that, or whatever, you can press this undo and you can go back to your sound. So. I personally have been making a preset in different synths and I hit the button to change the preset and then I lost my entire sound I was working on, which is really frustrating because sometimes it can take a long time and you're never really gonna get that sound back again. It's kind of like losing a recording. So with this, it's kind of like if you have a cool sound going, you change the preset by accident, you can undo that. So that's a really cool thing right there. Moving on from there, we have the multi-core, which I highly suggest if you have like an i5 or an i7 processor to keep this on because this is going to distribute the voices that Diva generates through the available cores, which dramatically reduces the CPU usage because as we know, this synth is a CPU lover, I should say. It's a CPU lover, uses a lot of CPU, but that's kind of the uh, price we pay for such a divine sound that this synth gives us. So that's something to think about. And also, if you have maybe an older CPU or a really newer one, in the manual it does say it can cost maybe not as good results by using this knob here so or this button here. So maybe try to A-B it if you're using a lot of CPU. Maybe try to toggle that on and see if it helps you out. And it probably will. So I generally always keep this one on here if I'm ever de de designing stuff. And then also if the CPU is getting a little bit too intense, always down here you can always set this accuracy to draft or maybe too fast. And that's going to help out... Uh, with your CPU and you know, once you have your this synth in, other songs in, other synths, other samples, a lot of it can contribute to choking your CPU. So something to keep in mind to keep these settings down a little bit there. So moving on from there, we have the output volume over here, the final output as opposed to this uh, volume amplifier section down here. This is not going to color the sound. It's literally just the last step of boosting or reducing your signal. So it's a way to keep your patches in check because you know if you're switching through a lot of your patches, you don't really want one super loud or super quiet. You kind of want to keep them consistent. It's just good practice to do. So moving on from there, what's kind of nice in uh, in Diva and a lot of other Yuhi synths is when you're using these knobs here, left click, obviously you can drag and stuff like that. You can hold shift before you click and you can do fine little increments like that. And you can also use your scroll wheel and move in integer values. So you can't necessarily move in decimals or points. It's only going to be integers, which is interesting because if you have 107.08, you have one mouse wheel up, you can go 108 or you can hold shift and click and then move it in fine increments right there. I thought that was actually a really cool change over there. You can also right click this and select lock and you can still change these knobs here. But what this is doing, if you change presets, it's not going to change that knob. It's going to keep it locked through the presets there. 
So let's right click and unlock this over here. And sometimes you're gonna see this little red circle with an M inside it. So over here in the modifications, let's say for example, this resonance mod, let's say we attach something like LFO one to that and we make it change here. This M right here is going to signify that this modulation change is happening in this modifications panel. And as soon as we double click this to zero and remove it, it's gonna be gone. So anything that we do in here, and it says right here, this little M is parameters modulated here within this modification window. So I thought I would point that out. So that should cover most of this or all of this top bar here. The very last thing really is this Yuhi logo. If we click this, we can go to their website. We can go to the user guide, which is very helpful. I always suggest to read the manual. I think it's a very fun thing to do personally because there's stuff in there that you won't really know unless you read the manual. There's some cool little tricks sometimes that they throw in there, some cool little tutorials you can do. So definitely highly re recommend to read it. It's only like 60 pages, 62 or something like that page long, and it's very well written and very well done. So Highly recommend to do that. You can look at your docs folders, support forum, their social medias and all that stuff and install some sound sets over here. And then on the far right that we looked at before is this gear here and you can do some like MIDI learning and you can do uh, this MIDI table down over here. And last but not least, we have these settings here. So you can have the mouse wheel raster on or off if you want and different settings that you can go through if you'd like to. So that's pretty much this top bar in a nutshell. And as if you haven't noticed, this skin is a little bit different than the standard red one that I got from their website. So I kind of like this one better. It's a little bit easier on my eyes because the red kind of hurts after a little while. And I just think this is kind of a little bit more uh, laid back, a little bit darker theme, and it kind of matches my DAW a little bit more. So with that being said, thank you for watching. The next video will be out very soon. And yeah, see you in the next video.